So I'm joined here by uh, Jason Davis, who just finished a panel on password cracking and time memory trade-off. And uh, you're working for the site, what is this, uh, MD5Lookup? MD5Lookup.com. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about, uh, to somebody that's not familiar with time memory trade-off, you know, the basic example, we're all kind of familiar, our audiences, with password cracking, but how this differs from your standard brute force and dictionary attacks. With time memory trade-off um, compared to brute forcing, brute forcing you have to go ahead and you have to compute every combination for your certain key space every single time, which is sort of ridiculous because if you do a one through eight password, it's going to take you forever. And then if you do that on one password, you have to do that for all your passwords. So why not just generate them all but store them into memory the first time and then make it quick recall all the other times? That's what time memory trade-off is applied to password cracking, basically. Now, I think a lot of people are also familiar with um, the popular Rainbow Crack software or Rainbow Tables. And uh, from your panel, I understand that uh, what you're doing is similar, yet uh, a lot different. So can you tell me what those differences are? Um, Rainbow Tables uh, use Rainbow Mathematics, which is basically pattern or uh, interval oriented. Um, when you do that, you lose accuracy. So you're that's why Rainbow Tables have 97.3, 98.9. And when you really get into the 99.9999 percentage, the tables increase drastically. That's because they have to generate all those intervals, all those patterns, the whole thing. In, um, in hash databasing, which is what I do, basically you generate all the combinations and you store them, and there is no pattern oriented, anything like that, for whatever character set you generate it for, you're going to have 100% accuracy for that character set. So. But at the expense of disk space? Uh, yeah, but as I said in the panel, we're, we're, we're definitely working on that. We've got a lot of new techniques that are coming up. I had some people mention some stuff to me, you know, and they're going to be emailing me and hopefully I can work out some more stuff to help reduce that because right now we're relatively competitive with the same sizes as Rainbow Tables, but I'm hoping that we can, we can beat that, you know, and definitely definitely uh, push the envelope when it comes to that. So, so what kind of um, what kind of tricks and uh, you know ways are you using to, to reduce the size of the current tables? What's your technique right now? Generally speaking, what you do is you store you store your text and your hash. Well, if your hash is 30, or 32 characters, which is 16 bytes, and your text is 4, um, you know, you're going to have 20 bytes there. Well, what we do is we take the hash and we cut it down and we see our see it. And then um, that cuts it down to about six, 6 characters, which is about 3 bytes, and then you store your clear text with that. You see or see that as well. And uh, what happens is you're going to run into a bunch of collisions, and then you group those. So you not only reduce the rows, but you shrink the size and everything. It's basically like a really pimp way to use CRCs as a compression mechanism. So, yeah. And anybody can try this at home. They can just go to uh, md5lookup.com and, yeah. and punch in a hash. Yeah. We, I have a ton of the research online that explains everything uh, in more elaborate motion than, you know, what I did with the panel. But, yeah, they can, they can use the, uh, the regular single search online right now. And then um, eventually I'm going to have the, uh, the multi-engine, which can you just put in a list of hashes and it'll just crack them all and give you an output on it. So. And when you did your demonstration, it was really amazing to see that even when you would give it, uh, you know, five or more hashes, it was able to compute those in a matter of seconds. So what is it on the back end that's making it uh, so optimized? Um, basically, the, one of the problems with, well, it's not really a problem, but Rainbow Tables uses flat files. And um, you, can't, you can't really build a web interface for flat files. So what we did was I put all of it into a real MySQL database. And uh, we indexed the whole thing. And then, I mean, the index is large, but it, it allows us to break passwords. And uh, literally from that database server, we can break them in 0.20 of a second. So that's, that's one of the things is that we're database, not flat file. And it's, it's web oriented, so a lot of the overhead just flat out isn't there. So what kind of uh, issues have you had with storage? Um, the original database was, wasn't too huge. Um, we're, so like I had one, like I had two 160 gig drives. Now we, we basically, the limitations, I'm up to 1.8 terabytes now. And you know, I'm already like at 1.5 of that full. So I definitely, in order to add more characters to the database, make it more effective statistically, you have to have more space. So right now, um, I'm just looking into funding for uh, new hard drives, just you know, new compressions, that type of thing. And it's all research, and we're just feeling it out, working it out. You know, whatever comes, comes. So, so you were talking about characters. Uh, what kind of character space have you been able to uh, put in your index right now? Um, our new one, which is 1.5, will break 1 through 5, everything, all 255 printable, 6 and 7, alphanumeric, 8 alpha, lower, and um, 
zero through ten length numbers. So that's a huge what's trick. what's the eventual goal? The uh, eight everything? Um, eight everything would be cool because then we'll we'll literally hit about seventy to eighty percent of all passwords on the planet. So. And do you have any idea as to uh, what the size of that might be? Fourteen terabytes. Wow, fourteen terabytes. So uh, now you're just doing this on your own, or is this for a company? This is, uh, I, I basically have separated myself from my company for this one. I'm self-employed and uh, it's been it's been funded on my own pocket and everything right now. I've done everything myself and I've had a couple people help me with testing, programming, stuff like that. So. Well, we definitely understand how that is here at Hack5. Uh, so is there ways that people can support the project? Uh, maybe even, yeah, it, can they submit their own hashes or, or values, anything like that? Or um, I mean... They could eventually when I uh, when I put the new one online, I'm I'm gonna see if maybe if I can start taking donations because then I can start building another server with a better database. And since I'm not a big fan of charging for the service, you know, I'd rather just have people, you know, okay, cool, I use this, I do 300 a day, you know, I'll give them 10 bucks or whatever. So I might look into something like that, but you know, other than that, it's just gonna be self-sustained. So. Right, and you also said in the panel that you're a fan of open source, so that you're uh, you're giving up the source code for this, so anybody can do this themselves. Everything right now is currently just open source. You can go to the website, download the utils. The only problem is that I haven't thrown a lot of, a lot of documentation in with it. There's basically just some keynotes inside the utils. What source code without documentation? Yeah, well, it's it was sort of thrown together, you know, because uh, I'm not exactly a a C++ programmer, I had to basically relearn it, force myself to do it, and, you know, I didn't really want to put it up there because it's not exactly 100% stable, you know, so it still needs critiquing, and with the next release, once I'm done with the new database, um, probably in about a month or so, I'm going to throw up the new utilities, which are a lot more stable, and uh, then the new one will be online, so. And then anybody can make these at home, but what kind of, uh, aside from the, um, the storage requirements, what kind of CPU time does it take to generate these databases? Um, because it's written in real C, it's, it basically takes five days to run through the process, and I, do, I did it in five runs. So you're looking at about 25 days for the one that I'm building now. So 1.5 terabytes in under 30 days is pretty good. That's amazing considering it's only going to take a second to crack the password after that. Exactly. I, I'm willingly going to give up 1.5 terabytes in 25 days of basically just on a server that would be idling anyways to be able to proactively audit anything I want. So. And right now it's just MD5, right? Yeah, um, I had a few questions about that, and the algorithm can be easily adopted in the sources. Right now, all it does is include the MD5 headers and run the, the um, basically the MD5 function. You can change it to whatever you want, because the way that the compression is set up now, it's CRC oriented, not algorithm dependent. So, okay, and as you see this evolve, uh, where do you uh, where do you see MD5 lookup going in the next year? Um, I'm going to finish the new database in about a month. I'm going to leave that online for about a year. And uh, if I have the funding to move up the character set to the next one, then that's where I'm going to go. And it's free for anybody to use. Now, that obviously must put a, uh, a lot of burden on the server on the back end. So is that something that may change? Or, um, or are you running into problems with uh, you know, load on the server? Um, Dig.com, which is a popular like bookmarking site, we got hit on there and that basically broke my server. So um, I'm definitely going to split it up, have a database server and then two web servers. And uh, But that's an eventuality. It'll come around. So that's, I, yeah, definitely. Because if we got slash dotted, I wouldn't be up for a week. So Okay. And uh, so that means be nice, guys. Uh, so where can they find any more information about uh, your research and then try it out themselves? Um, everything's on the site, and there's a lot of research out there right now on uh, just basic time memory trade-off. People that are they're taking the ideas, and that's what I want, people to take the ideas, turn them into whatever they want. I want to see better versions of what I've done. And, you know, I, I really think time memory trade-off is the way to go with password cracking now because storage is so abundant. Why not, you know? It just totally beats the pants off of brute forcing. So oh, great, especially uh, with, you know, hard drives as cheap as ARD today. So, well, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us and uh, we'll be checking in and, and seeing how you're doing. Okay, thanks.